Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce. And in tonight's Einstein Analytics video, we are going to be talking about the how and why of real-time analytics. As I'm sure you guys are aware, I'm not a big slides guy. I'm much more of a hands-on demo kind of guy. But I recently presented at Dreamforce 2019 on this very topic, and I thought, why waste the material? I'm going to just reuse those slides because, uh, let's be honest, it's easy. So let's jump right into the content. What is real-time? Well, real-time is, uh, according to the dictionary, it is the actual time during which a process or event occurs. So this has to do with how we watch events unfold over time within the context of the life cycle of that event. And there's a lot of confusion when we talk about analytics because this often gets blurred with the computing definition of real time, which is relating to a system in which input data is processed within milliseconds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if we want to know things as they actually happen, well, I argue this does not even exist in nature because everything is limited to the constant speed of light and uh, anything moving, uh, two objects moving away from each other uh, at like, you know, greater than the speed of light total between the two of them, uh, information can never actually pass between them, you know, and then you get the whole red shift, blue shift, that whole thing. Uh, I'm in analytics, not physics. Physics is fun though. Um, but the point is to say that we've kind of muddied these ideas together. And when you're talking about, for example, World War II, news from the front, you know, it would sometimes take days to reach back home, but we still consider that real time as the events unfold. And because of how fast uh, computers and the internet have become, we, we tend to muddy these concepts together. So I challenge you this, before you go and implement real time analytics in your business, the first thing that you need to do is you need to understand why. What is it about a data flow that can refresh hourly that is not going to be fast enough? And then I challenge you one step further. Go and create a formula field in your sandbox, and I want you to do uh, opportunity close date minus opportunity create a date, feed that into the standard report builder, and tell me what that average number is. And if your data flow is not 20 times faster than that, then maybe, maybe, maybe you should consider real-time analytics. But let's talk about some of the use cases under which this is something that is actually needed. So rapidly fluctuating high volume data where information is about the current where information about the current state is going to be mission critical. So let's look at some examples. So stock tickers, uh, moment to moment changes where if you're uh, working with outdated information that's five minutes old, 10 minutes old, an hour old, that might change your decision making process. Another example would be IoT data, where you have millions of sensors on a factory floor, and as soon as a failure happens, we immediately need to notify a technician, possibly even sound the alarm, or at a minimum, maybe stop the, uh, the machines. That might not be a terrible idea. But again, I wouldn't expect to see this on an analytics dashboard. Voter polls. This is a really interesting one because, uh, you know, the night of an election, having data to the second is extremely important. But the minute those polls close, we will never update that data set again. Social media data, rapidly shifting, uh, fluctuating, what's trending, what are the current hashtags, you know, who's uh, important in the media right now. Or your skip solves and you figured out that you can integrate real-time analytics uh, with, you know, from, from Fortnite. Therefore, you must. And I personally identify with this use case as somebody who has built board game Risk in Salesforce as well as the card game Blackjack. So uh, this is probably the use case that's going to get me to take action the most. Uh, so let's say that you actually do need it. Uh, now what are you going to do about it? Okay, well, fortunately, Salesforce does give us a variety of options. So what you're looking at right now is a Sokol Step powered dashboard from my Blackjack build. Uh, it's being governed by a uh, flow. Unfortunately, this is broken in the Winter 20 release. I was exploiting a bug within Flow Builder that if you uh, modify data after the last screen is shown, it would force a page refresh. So the flow basically dead ends after each action and then looks at the data to see what to do next. And that's what's actually causing the dashboard to refresh on the other side. I do have a number of methods that I can use to get beyond uh, this, this uh, feature turning out to be a bug. But, uh, you know, it's going to be a little bit before I implement them. And unfortunately, I am going to have to break my uh, 
restriction that I was going to do this with zero Apex or uh, Lightning code. Uh, but this is an example where I did need real time because I wanted the dashboard to be able to reflect what was currently in the player's hand. And uh, it wasn't possible for me to do a purely analytics build with the amount of uh, random number iteration that uh, the degree of random numbers that I actually needed in this use case. So the next option is going to be Apex steps. Now this example is taken from documentation right now. This is a real time stock ticker. This is just a screenshot. The example uh, shown here is what's currently shown in documentation, but unfortunately the endpoint that they were connecting to is uh, no longer up and running. That is outside of Salesforce's control. And I'm under the impression that the documentation is going to be updated, uh, but other use cases for this, I've seen you know, Twitter dashboards or you know, if you need to uh, be able to get insight out of an external system that is highly transactional, high volume and fluctuates rapidly, but you only need a small subset of that data, then maybe this guy is for you. So now it's time for a demo. It's almost like a regular video for my channel. So I'm over in my analytics studio and I'm gonna start by going to create and selecting a dashboard, click to create a blank dashboard. So now this new feature uh, is called Salesforce Direct and it was added in the winter 20 release. What's that you say? You watch all of my new release coverage and you didn't see anything about it? Well, funny story about that. Uh, I tend to read, read the release notes as soon as they are available in preview and then I roll out content on my channel as quickly as I can produce it, sometimes faster, sometimes longer. And uh, this was a relatively late addition. Uh, my guess is that they didn't know if it was gonna be ready in time so they held it back out of the release notes until they were sure it was gonna make it in. So honestly, I just didn't know it was a thing. And by the time I knew about it, uh, the release was a couple of days away from prod and I just said, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna let this one slide and we will cover it after the release and after Dreamforce and all of that. But this feature is called Salesforce Direct. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click the Create Query button and I'm going to select uh, Salesforce Direct uh, at the top here. And this is going to allow me to query real-time data directly from my Salesforce org. So for example, I'm going to select Opportunities and I'm gonna group them by stage and I want sum of amount. And we can get rid of counter rows. So then I'm gonna drag this bad boy onto the page. And when we view our dashboard, we're gonna see this little green indicator right here that tells us that one or more of the widgets in this dashboard are coming directly from a Salesforce object. So let's hop into core and see if we can mess with one of these records and maybe change the values around. All right, so I found an opportunity that's in the prospecting stage with an amount of 2.2 million. So if we look back at our dashboard, we see that there's 25 million in prospecting. And I bet you if I move it to proposal price quote, that ought to make a dent. I would expect to see uh, this drop down to probably in the ballpark of 23 million maybe 22 million depending on the rounding probably 22 million and i would expect this guy to jump up to 18 million so let's see if that actually happens and exactly how fast it takes to do that so i'm going to mark proposal price quote as my current stage and click the mark as current stage button watch my little slider go across there love that stuff so now we hop back over here oh no nothing actually happened well that's the thing you have to interact with the dashboard to get it to refresh back to the blackjack problem so why don't i just try filtering something no no that's not going to work i bet you if i had something else that was interacting with it that would probably do it but if i just hit edit and view it again there we go 22 million 18 million exactly what we would expect ha uh, would happen now, one thing to be aware of is that the uh, Salesforce direct queries do have some limitations. So for example, we cannot leverage them in compare tables, but they are fully bindable. So for example, I can get this to interact with, uh, you know, toggles and other uh, visualizations that are coming from my actual Salesforce uh, analytics data sets uh, and not just Salesforce objects directly. The other thing about this is because it's, um, it is a direct query, it's actually based off of a SQL query. Now the dashboard footprint for this in the JSON is going to be different than a normal SQL step. But if you have a developer that is familiar with how to modify SQL queries, which is abundantly documented, 
then it should be fairly easy for you to modify this query. So what's a use case where I'm actually going to need to do that? Well, in its minimal viable product state that it was released with, the uh, Salesforce Direct queries do not allow us to traverse the relationship model, which means that on a step of opportunity data, I'm not going to be able to get something as you know simple and expected as account name. But that doesn't mean that it's not there at all. So let's see if we can actually get account name added into this query. So it looks like that's actually not that terrible at all. Um, you know, I imagine that we would be able to do things like uh, casting to change the name of column headers because right now this does kind of make it look like that's the opportunity name when it's in fact the account name. Uh, limitations otherwise that we're going to have are things like uh, you're not going to be able to necessarily leverage the action framework unless you use bindings to pull the results from these sort of queries and push them into your uh, SACWIL based or compact form based queries. For more information on this, I actually do have a video on my channel on how to do white space analysis using SOQL SACWIL unions. And I believe that the same kind of logic would be applicable to the Salesforce direct queries. So excellent new feature that we're seeing in the winter 20 release here. And I'm very excited to see what they're going to have for it in the future. So again, as we wrap up here, whenever the business asks you for a real time dashboard and tells you that the hourly refreshes that you currently have scheduled on your, you know, couple of million rows of data are not adequate. Ask them to explain to you the use case under which this data is not going to be valid. A lot of times it might just be something as simple as, well, you know, we have a, 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 a last contact date on opportunity. And when I'm going through and I want to see when the last time that I called this guy to, to bug them to buy stuff was, you know, if that's not up to date, I might double tap them in an hour. Well, if that's all you got, then use a Salesforce direct query embed it on the dashboard, pass a filter through a reference step to filter it to the context of the current opportunity, and if necessary, use a little bit of dynamic text to pop up a, you know, a thing on the screen. You could even just do it off of last modified date. And if the last modified date in the opportunity does not, ex does not equal the one that's in your data set, just pop up a little warning. Hey, this data you know, has changed since the last refresh. Or oftentimes, it's really just a matter of perception of how stale is the data. In which case, a simple compute expression adding the time that the last time the data flow ran and putting that up on the dashboard is going to solve that use case and is going to satisfy the business. Because at the end of the day, it's not about what we build, it's about the problems that we solved. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, tell a friend, and as always, thanks for watching.